When you've been in the game for over 50 years like me, and I thought that I'd seen everything, but I hadn't till this season. And this has just blown, not blown me away. Well, it has, it's blown everybody away because it's a special story about we've unsettled the establishment. I reckon I've used the word unbelievable more times this season than I have in the whole of the rest of my life put together because people will say to me, you know, what do you think about this season then? And I just say, you know, it's unbelievable. Determined, fearless, I think that's our favourite one we've been using this season, uh, passionate, stressful and exciting. I mean, if you'd have taken this story into Walt Disney if he'd still been alive and says, well, can you make a film of that? He'd have said, oh, too fanciful, you know, and they never work. Seen 5,000 to 1 on William Hill, downloaded the app, um, went to put a pound on it, and then thought, if they actually do it, I want more than that. Put five pound on it. The reason I put the bet on is because I wanted Leicester to win the league. As the season's got closer to the end, panic sets in and thoughts go through your head. So I cast in two pound of my bet, which at the end of the season will give me 15,000 pounds plus the 5,600 I've already had, would make just over 20,000 pounds. The amount of interest that there's been from international media over the last few weeks has been crazy. You just walk around the city and there's another journalist with a microphone interviewing people from you know, New Zealand, Australia, Canada. I think the Japanese were in here filming. Uh, you get interviewed and it's, uh, so are you going to tell us about Leicester? I says, well, I'd love to tell you about Leicester, but I don't know Leicester. We call ourselves Leicester. Ah, uh, Leicester. Yeah, just for Ranieri and Leicester. What incredible team. I've been to Ireland. I've been to Wales last week because we got relatives and everybody wants Leicester to win this league. And he keeps shouting the odds, Harry Kane will catch Leicester. The only way they'll catch Leicester Tottenham is if you get the Express from London to here. And that's it. It's really noticeable at work and in the city that everybody's talking about it. And people within the team that have never watched the games before have actually watched them when they've been on TV or, on, or they've got them on the computer. I have been here since we're in thick and thin when we're in Division 1. And we've climbed all the way up slowly, but surely we get to the top. I never thought you could feel like this about football, ever. I've been up, I've been down, I've been crying, I've been happy. I was like, what have you done to me? <laughs> we go home and we watch every single Premier League game now, and then we're like, oh good, they need to lose, they need to win. And I actually know what I'm talking about. When I came here in 1971, we've had our ups and downs in them 40 years. You know, I've seen promotion, I've seen relegation, I've seen administration. There was one point where we literally hadn't raised enough money and were 24 hours away from going bust. They were about £50 million in debt. I'd seen friends having to walk out of this club carrying the cardboard boxes when they'd been made redundant. You know, it was heartbreaking. They put together a consortium fronted by Gary Lineker with a supporters group as well, which eventually became the Foxes Trust, and managed to raise £5 million, which brought the club out of administration. The fact that it's the Foxes Never Quit stuff, you know, the fact that when the guys come out of the tunnel, there's the big Foxes Never Quit logo as they go out of the tunnel now. And, you know, that's a real part of Leicester's psyche. It's only been down once. The manager removed it, but he didn't last long. And as soon as he'd gone, we put it back up again. I got a, an email off an elderly gentleman last week who is 92. And he is basically saying, I've been supporting the club since the 1930s. This is wonderful. Uh, he still comes down to every game. I've been supporting 73 years, but then I had a break because I got married and my husband didn't like football. And then when he died in 1980, I got back again, so I've been there ever since. So what happens with the clappers? Where mum and dad and grandma and granddad used to sit there, or not both face, but you know, it wasn't for them to be, come on city, come they would start with the clappers, so consequently you got 30,000 getting even mum and dad and grandma and granddad do the clappers. The only teams that have won it, apart from Blackburn earlier on, um, 
who won it just the once. It's only been Manchester United, Manchester City, Chelsea and Arsenal. That's four teams in you know, nearly a quarter of a century. And for Leicester to break into that from a position of being seven points adrift just over a year ago, I mean, it is, it is truly amazing. Thankfully now we've got some owners who genuinely seem passionate about football and the club and the supporters and are not in it to make money because they've got loads. <laughs> 70 odd percent just I think that's the chairman coming in by the way <laughs> that's his heli that's his helicopter possibly is Leicester City in the Champions League is absolutely unreal we're all going on Europe too Europe too Europe too they've obviously done a lot of work in the Far East promoting the club um, which has really rubbed off but I, just the success this year has taken it globally without them having to do very much to be honest I started to believe after about seven or eight games, I thought there's something special here with this, this squad. The squad as well. I said that they're, they're fitted together like a jigsaw. What an incredible story for Leicester City this season. It's amazing thinking back to the day Claudio Ranieri was unveiled at the King Power Stadium on the 20th of July. Susan Whelan, the Chief Executive Officer, sat alongside Ranieri that day and asked the supporters to back the club's judgment. Could we believe we'd be in this position? I mean, there was more chance of finding Elvis Presley in the Leicestershire tip shop, wasn't there, than doing what we've done. I mean, the odds were 5,000 to 1. I mean, blimey. Wes Morgan and Robert Hooth. Who would have thought those two, at the age of 31 and 32, would form one of the best central defensive partnerships in the Premier League? Danny Drinkwater, who finished last season unable to get into the Leicester team and finishes this season hoping to go to Euro 2016 with England. Carry on instilling that ethos of passion and determination and those players playing for each other and keeping that team spirit, rather than become that corporate Man United prom sandwich eating type of scenario. And then Shinji Okazaki up front, who never stops running. Behind, Jamie Vardy, who was playing non-league football only four years ago. And for Ranieri, at the age of 64, there's finally going to be a top flight title. <laughs>